Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. And today we're looking at how do we configure the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant in Prepared Version 5. Although we're using Version 5 in this configuration guide, just about everything we cover will apply to Version 4 as well. We're going to be looking at various aspects. Initially, how do we download and install the configurator? What's in the configuration? And how do we get that configuration and the LED lights into prepared? Once we're in prepared, we'll be using that configuration to build a number of different throttle profiles to suit various aircraft, including individual reverses. At times this may seem a little bit complicated, but providing you follow the steps in the order that I present them in, I'm sure will get you where you want to be. So we've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. To find the configurator, go to the main Honeycomb website, link in the notes below, and scroll right down to the bottom. And there, click on Downloads. That'll take you to the Downloads page and once again scroll down and there you'll see the Prepared Downloads. A separate one for version 3, 4 and 5. Click on the appropriate one to download. If you have problems downloading, right click and open in New tab and it will download. That's it, you're done. The download will be a zipped file. Unzip the file using your chosen application and you'll get an executable file. Open the executable, in my case a personal preference, I like to run it as administrator and the install will begin and then just simply follow the prompts. It's not a large program and the install will not take long at all. Once completed it will leave the honeycomb icon on your desktop. On initially starting the application you'll be presented with this view. By holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse, you can manipulate the view. You can also zoom in and out using the scroll wheel on the mouse. This helps ensure that all clickable items are visible as needed, if you were going to do any actual configuration within this program. But first things first, go up to Actions and click on that, and then to Open Settings. And then from that sub-menu, About. Open that. You need to ensure the Honeycomb Configurator is version 2 or higher. If it isn't, you need to uninstall the current Configurator and re-download the most recent version. There are revised functions in version 2. Our next important step is to go up to Profiles and open that. Choose Default Throttle and then click on the Load icon. This will load the default configuration and you can confirm this in the bottom left hand corner. It will say Profile Default Throttle. The next essential step is click on Actions and then choose Disable Simulator Defaults. And it's very important that you do this. Next to the picture of the throttle, disable the necessary version. You'll get a warning message. Click OK. I need to highlight the importance of doing this step. If you don't, you're going to get conflicting controls in prepared, as a simulator will always try and configure any peripheral attached. Now back to our Actions menu, and our next important step is to activate the current profile. Click on that. So what we've done is we have now loaded the new default profile into prepared. And that default profile has some preset configurations as well as the LEDs. So we could now jump straight into the sim. But first let's understand what is configured so we know what to test in the sim. I'd also like to stress the order in which we did these actions is also critical. Parts of the graphic are highlighted and these are clickable spots. If I click on the gear lever, the window pops up showing me the basic functions. I've clicked on the gear up tab and now on the right hand side I can go to the profile editor. And by checking both conditions and variables I can establish whether or not this is configured. So this is preset. It's gear up. Let's check something else. I'll check one of the buttons. Let's try heading. I've clicked on the button on the graphic and heading button pops up. Now across to the profile editor. Nothing under conditions but under variables we can see AP autopilot heading hold. So this button is pre-configured. But not everything is. The trim wheel 
the gear lever, the FCU switches and all the individual autopilot switches are pre-configured, as are the flaps. There are seven toggle switches and I've selected switch one. And from the select button menu, I've clicked on toggle one on. There are no entries under conditions and variables under press event. So this switch is not configured. So these will be configured in SIM or alternatively in this configurator. None of the axes are configured. But if we click on axis one, the select button menu shows us the possible button presses. One, the area past the detent is treated as a button and also both the commercial and GA have a go around button. On axis two to four, there's an additional option for the commercial handle reverses, which are also treated as buttons. None of these are configured. Please note it's necessary when selecting an item and highlighting it on the graphic for the profile editor to reflect the correct information. It's necessary to click on the appropriate button in the select button box. Before jumping into prepared, let's have a look what else is available within the configurator. And from the top left hand menu, we're going to actions again. We can create a new profile. We would do this if we'd made some changes and we'll have a look at that later on. We can change the selected device as this configurator is for both the Alpha Flight Control and the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. And the yoke is fully configurable in this app as well. Let's go back to the throttle and back to the Actions menu. And this time, select Open Settings. There are a number of choices of languages and we can also import and export profiles. We'll have a look at importing a profile shortly. If we click on the About tab, this shows us the version number as well as website, forum and support areas. But note these are for Aerosoft. Danger zone is best avoided and is your reset zone. Let's see if we can download a profile. From Actions, let's choose Download Profiles. And once we click that, it will take us to this website. Despite the error message, click on the Downloads link. And you're on the Aerosoft website. And on the right hand side, there are Honeycomb Profiles. Let's choose Bravo Throttle Quadrant. This is a place where individuals have designed their own profiles for various aircraft and have made it available for you to download, saving you the hassle of setting it up. Note it covers prepared and explained profiles here. The selection is fairly limited at this time, but hopefully that will grow over time. It's easy to import a profile. I've chosen the PMDG Jumbo Jet. On the right hand side is the download file option. I'm going to click that and download the file. Done. Back in the configurator and from the actions menu, I'm going to choose the open settings option and then import profiles. An option then pops up allowing you to select where you had saved the file. For me, it's via my default downloads location. Choose the file and click open. The profile is not yet loaded. You need to tick on it and then click import profiles. And a message will come up telling you if it's been successful or not. We're done, we can now close this menu. Now click on Profiles from the top menu. And there we can see our imported PMDG profile. We would need to load and activate it to send it through to the SIM. And once in SIM, save it under a different profile name for future reference. The LED configurations form part of the standard default profile. Config changes and information on the LEDs can be found on the right hand side from the profile editor by switching it to LED mode. Then select LED. There are 23 LED options and they are numbered in the sequence that they were created. So for example we can see LED 1 is the FCU heading button. This one I'm highlighting here. And if we go to conditions, we're able to see what that parameter is. And it will illuminate on autopilot heading hold. When the value is greater than zero. In other words, when the button is pressed. Let's have a look quickly at a few more. Just so we get a feel of how they're configured. I'm going to choose LED light number 13, which is landing, the landing gear right green. Each of the three landing lights have three conditions, off, green or red. And this is saying the green light will show for the right position when the value is greater than 0 0.995, one being fully down. Let's check one of the LEDs on the annunciator panel. I've chosen LED 22, which in this case is annunciator panel volts and similar parameters are here. 
If you found something like this was misreading, then it would simply be a matter of coming in here, creating a new profile and changing the value. It is beyond the scope of this video, and my time resources to be honest, to cover off the various aspects in terms of programming the configurator, although we will be touching on it briefly to achieve individual throttle reverses. More information is available from the gentleman that created this application for Aerosoft, known on YouTube as Mr. Jaranet. I'll leave links to his video in the notes below. Fundamentally, there is a schedule of event IDs, and these effectively are instructions to prepared to carry out relevant functions. And these are used within this configuration in conjunction with a set of variables that provide the parameters to the event IDs. Meaning if you're willing to dig into the detail, it's fairly highly configurable. However, I must acknowledge that compared to other simulators, there are a number of significant limitations due to the aging ESP platform on which Prepared is based. But now, let's jump into the sim. As we activated the default profile in the configurator, it is now live. Before doing anything else, my strongest recommendation is let's save that. Click on Export. And I'm going to save it as Bravo Throttle Quadrant Default Profile. And save it, and this will allow me to return to my default profile if I ever need to. We can find it by hitting the Import button. Before making any changes, let's make sure this profile is working. I've jumped into an aircraft that'll let me test most things. Lights are on on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and now testing the trim. That seems to be working. The gear lever's working. Lights aren't changing because I'm on the ground. I'm happy with that. Let me now check my flap lever. We saw earlier that this was configured. I can't use any of the axes because they're not configured yet. I also note on the Bravo throttle quadrant a couple of the annunciator lights are on. One of them is the brake light. So I can test this as well by toggling the brake on and off. And the light should react accordingly. And yes it is. So that looking good as well. So at this stage, I'm fairly comfortable that the default profile has transferred across. That's why we saved the default profile. This is our fundamental building block for the future. I'm not going to test everything. I don't need to at this stage, but I do want to just check the FCU panel. I've moved the switch to Alt, and now I'll test out the increase and decrease altitude. That's working. Next click down is vertical speed. Let me test that. That's all good. And now let me test the heading. That seems to be working all right. Fourth notch down is course, so let's see if we can change the course. Yep, I can increase and decrease that, happy with that. And last but not least, my indicated airspeed, the final notch down, I can check that. And I'm able to dial in my indicated airspeed, that's fine as well. For our first config, we're going to start with a simple single prop. I'm using the DR400 in this example. This aircraft only has throttle and mixture controls. From the top menu, let's go to options and then controls. Prepared is really showing its age with this interface. Choose the Bravo throttle quadrant from the controller selection. And then axis assignment. There should only be one axis assigned and that's throttle one as a default and that'll be the leftmost axis on your Bravo throttle quadrant. Let's now set up the Bravo throttle quadrant handles to reflect the type of aircraft that we're producing. We want one throttle and we'll leave that on the leftmost axis and the only other thing we'll need is a mixture control. Now you can put that on axis two and configure accordingly. Just a personal preference of mine, I put it on axis three, giving my hands a little bit more room. I'm gonna highlight engine one mixture axis. It's a new binding, so I'll click on new. Then physically move the axis on the Bravo throttle quadrant. It's picked it up, click OK, and that axis is now assigned. Then don't forget to tick the box for reverse axis. Let's test it. As part of this first config guide, 
I'll also cover off toggle switches. And while some actions can be configured within the configurator specifically on or off, by default in prepared they are simply toggles, switching from one condition to the next. Using the parking brake as an example, let's look at one possible solution. So back to our controls menu. Don't forget as I usually do to change it to Bravo Throttle Quadrant. And this time we want key assignments, not access assignments. As a switch is basically a button press. In the top right hand search bar, type in park. Then parking brake comes up. Highlight the item and then press new. We're going to add a new control and not change the existing one. You can configure more than one control for the same function. In the new assignment box, I'm going to press switch one. It's button 34. It comes up. That's great. Let's click OK. Now let's head back to the sim and see if it works. The brakes are currently on. On the quadrant I press the switch and you'll see the brakes go off. Click the switch the other way and nothing happens. The brakes are still off. Switch it again and the brakes are back on. Press the switch down and nothing happens. There are a number of ways we can tackle this issue. And on some aircraft it reacts differently. Let's go back to our parking brake assignment. I'm going to type in park again just to make it quicker and easier. And both the standard key press and the Bravo throttle quadrant configuration will show. On some aircraft just ticking the on release box will work, but not on others. The one way I've found to make sure it always works is to add another command using the same switch but clicking it from the up to the down position. I click on new, click the switch again so it registers as button 34, just as we did last time but this time click on release as well and click OK. So now we have two actions to the same switch. Let's jump back into the sim and let's see if it's worked. And this should work on all aircraft. Parking brakes are currently off, now on. Click again and they're off. Move the switch again and they're off. The other issue you'll find is sometimes the switches are out of sync. Depending on the switches, position at startup and the aircraft condition. To get them back in sync, activate the in aircraft switch or button with your mouse and then you should be back into sync. This is because it's a simple toggle. More refined control can be had in the configurator, but I won't be covering it on this occasion. Let's save this profile. Click on export and let's give the file a name. I'm going to call it Bravo Throttle Quadrant Single TM. T for throttle, M for mixture. Makes it easier to find. In the future, click save. Then in the future, whenever we're flying an aircraft that only needs a throttle or throttle and mixture, we can choose that profile. We've now got two profiles, default and the single. For our second configuration, I'm in Just Flight's Piper Arrow 3, one of my favorite prepared aircraft. And this aircraft has a throttle, a propeller and mixture control. Let's configure this. Back to our controls menu. As always, choose Bravo Throttle Quadrant from the top. And once that's done, we're going to go back to Axis Assignments. Click on that. Now let's set up our Bravo Throttle Quadrant to represent what's in the aircraft. Again, you could put the levers right next to each other, but as per config 1, I'm going to leave a gap between them. So I'm using axis 1, 3 and 5, as shown. No matter what axis you're using, it's going to be exactly the same process. Our mixture is now on a different axis. So we'll start by configuring that. Click on engine 1 axis, but this time it's not new, it's change. The config input box comes up. Move the mixture on the Bravo throttle quadrant, it's seen it, and click OK. Mixture is now reconfigured. Now we want engine 1 propeller axis. And as propeller hasn't been configured before, click on new. It's a new configuration. Move the prop lever so that it records, and once again click OK. And all three axes are configured. Make sure the reverse box is ticked for all three. That's done, let's go and test it out. We're back in the pipe arrow and we can move the throttle, prop and mixture levers and make sure that they're moving correctly. That all looking quite good. No problems with that. Let's test that parking brake. Parking brake off. Click again. Parking brake on. That's working as well. The parking brake carried across as we're building on the previous config, which we've already saved. Let's now save this configuration. So anytime we're using an aircraft with throttle, prop and mixture, we can select this profile. 
To do that, we select Export and let's give the file a name. I'm going to call it Bravo Throttle Quadrant Single TPM Throttle Prop Mixture. Hit Save and we're done. For our third configuration, I'm in the real air turbine Duke version 2. I was going to use the Saab 340, but Carinado haven't bothered to update it to version 5. Set up our quadrant for two throttles, two props, two mixtures. And this aircraft has a reverse range. We'll configure that as well. Initially, we'll have a look at the default easy way of configuring reverses. With our controllers set to Bravo Throttle Quadrant and under Key Assignments, in the search box, type in Throttle. And from the results, the one that we're looking for is Throttle Decrease Quickly, or F2. Just a note that this will decrease all throttles, but it's a quick configuration. With the Throttle Decrease Quickly highlighted, click on New. Make sure your throttle is at idle, then pull it past the detent area. It registers as button 24. Click OK. And because we want this action to be done multiple times, move the repeater bar all the way to the right. If you don't, you'll only get a tiny movement. Click OK and let's go back to our aircraft. Now, although we've only got Axis 1 configured, moving past the detent moves both throttles into reverse. For a single prop like the Caravan, this is ideal, but our configurator gives us greater control. Let's go back to that. To start off with, make sure you're on the default throttle profile. The blue bar at the bottom will tell you the profile that you're using. Then from Profile, choose Create New Profile, Click on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant and then from Copy From, select Default Throttle, not Default Profile from the list. That's important. Give it a name. I'm going to call it Twin Reverse Prop. I've got an option to select the profile after creating it, so I'll click that on and then Create. I now have a new profile, but it's got all the LED and other configurations from the default with it. We can check that quickly by checking on the LEDs to see if that configuration information is there as well as a number of buttons etc. If they're not, you haven't copied the default throttle profile. But that's all good, that's looking okay. Let's get on and configure reverses. My throttles are on axis 1 and 2. I'm going to choose axis 1 and it's showing the lever 1 detent button position. Click on that, then across to the profile editor, press event, then next to variables, I'm going to click the add button. I'm adding a variable and a list of all possible entries are shown. To save me time, I'm going to use the search function and type THR for throttle. All the throttle options are now shown. I'm looking for one command, throttle one decrease. I've clicked on that. And in this case, it needs a value. I want full reverse, so I'm putting minus one in the value box. So when I move past the detent, I will get max reverse, but I'll only get it on throttle one axis. Let's now do the same for the throttle two axis. Click on press event, go to variables and add a variable. And once again, we'll use the search option, but this time we're looking for throttle two decrease. So we just scroll down till we find it. I know it's somewhere here. There it is. Click on that. And once again, I'm going to add a value of minus one for max decrease. Once that's done, I'm going to hit apply changes in the bottom right hand corner to save these changes to my new profile twin reverse prop. You must now activate the profile to get it into prepared. An important thing to note at this stage, the new configuration has been loaded on top of whatever was the live profile at that time in prepared. In this case, it was the last profile we used. So that's good. Via key assignments, we need to delete the decrease throttle quickly that we set earlier. Otherwise, we've got double assignments as we've now done it in the configurator. Now let's go to Axis Assignments and set up for a twin prop for the Turbine Duke. And let's start by setting up our Throttle 2 Axis. Highlight it, click on New. Then we move Throttle 2 on the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Prepared as seen it, click OK, done. We now need to do the same thing for Engine 2 Propeller Axis. And we follow exactly the same process as we did for the throttles. And last but not least, we need to do Engine 2 Mixture Axis. As always, we need to click the Axis Reverse box. Don't get me started on that one. So let's now go and test out our new configuration. 
We're back in the Duke. Let's first of all test all the axes. That's all working fine. Now let's check the individual reverses. Throttle one. To take it out of reverse, just push it forward. Throttle two. Now let's try both at the same time. We now have individual reverses for throttle one and throttle two past the D10 position. Whilst we're in the Duke, I just want to cover off some of the other functions for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. I pressed Autopilot and the lights come on, and now the heading, Nav is working. And so are many of the other functions. My Approach and Back Course are also working fine, that's great. And finally, before we move on, let's just test out our Reverse Thrusters to see if they're working properly. I'm happy with that, no further changes at this time, so let's export the profile. I'll give it a name, Bravo Throttle Quadrant, Twin, TPM and R for reverses. And hit save. We're done. So a quick summary of the profiles we've got so far. Honeycomb default, single with throttle and mixture, and a single with throttle, prop and mixture. And I've added a single with the F2 reverse, and now our twin with reverses. We're going to start with setting up a 4-engine jet. First of all, let's load up the default throttle profile, as that's the template that we'll be working from. Now the default profile is loaded, we can create a new profile. Choose Create New Profile, then highlight the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and copy from Default Throttle, not Default Profile. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call this one Jets. Just a note, if you don't click the Select Profile after creating it, even though you've created it, the default profile will remain loaded. But that's no problem, we'll go back to Profile, highlight our new Jets Profile, and Open. The Jets Profile is now showing in the bottom right-hand corner. Now our Jets Profile doesn't use the detent area, it uses the reverses on axis 2 through 5. So we'll start off with axis 2, which is our number 1 throttle. We'll highlight that, then from the Select button box, we'll choose Lever 2 Commercial Reverses. Under the Profile Editor on the right, click on Press Event, and we want to add a variable. We do that by clicking on the plus sign. Using the search bar, we'll type in THR for Throttle to make our search quicker. Then we'll scroll down, we're looking for Throttle 1 Decrease. Once we see it, click on it, and it will be selected. And we want Max Reverse, so we'll type in under Value, Minus 1 just as we did for the props. Bottom right, apply changes, and let's go on and do the same for axis number three or throttle number two. Click on lever three reverser, press event and add a variable and so on. And we do this for all four axes, which I'll do now, but speed it up. Remember for axis three, which is our throttle two, we will select throttle two decrease. For the next one, throttle three and then throttle four decrease, etc. All four throttle axes are complete. Apply changes at the bottom. So these changes are saved to this profile. We're done, but we need to activate the profile to put it into prepared. By actions, click on activate current profile. And now back to prepared. From the controller menu, select Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and then we want to select Axis Assignments. Our new profile has loaded over our Twin Prop profile, but we've saved it, so no problem. And as this is a jet, we can go ahead and delete 
both propeller and mixture axis from engine 1 and engine 2. Once that's done, we need to reassign throttle 1 axis as it has changed position. So we click on change. We've set our Bravo throttle quadrant up for four engine jet. Move the lever. Prepared recognizes it. Click OK. Warning message comes up saying throttle 2 is already on that axis. Click yes, we know. And it deletes that input. We can now assign throttle 2 axis by clicking on new. Move the lever. It sees it as the RZ axis. Click OK. Throttle 2 is configured. We now continue with engine 3 throttle axis and configure that exactly the same way and then engine 4 throttle axis. So we configure all four throttles. That's done and now we need to make sure we tick the reverser box for all four throttles to ensure they function correctly. But we're not done yet. We need to configure the spoiler and flap axis. Type in spoiler in the search bar and spoiler axis comes up. Highlight it and click on new. Then move the axis on the Bravo throttle quadrant and it sees it as Y axis. Click OK. Back to the search bar in the top right hand corner and this time we're going to type in flaps as we need to configure axis 6 for our flaps in a jet. There it is, highlight it, click on new, and once again move the axis on the Bravo throttle quadrant. It's the Z axis, click OK. For both the spoiler and flaps axis, you do not need to tick the reverse box. Leave them unticked. So now we have our jet with all six axes configured, and we've already pre-configured the reverses in the configuration module earlier. So we're good to go. Let's go and test it out and see if it all works. First of all, let's check out the throttle axis. That's working fine. Now let's test out the individual reverses. First of all, reverser engine number one. Now number two, and now number three, and then number four. To take it out of reverse, we push the reverse lever forward and then move the throttle forward past idle. Quick and simple. Now let's test the spoiler and the flap axis. That's working as intended, so as before, we're going to hit the export button and we're going to save this profile. And I'm going to save it as Bravo Throttle Quadrant 4 Engine Jet. Once the file is renamed, hit save and we're done. We'll start our two engines set up in the configurator. From profiles, we'll load the default throttle profile as that's the template that we'll be working from. It'll indicate it's loaded in the bottom left hand corner. Once that's loaded, go back to Profiles and click on Create New Profile. And once again, we'll need to highlight the Bravo Throttle Quadrant and make sure we choose the Default Throttle Profile, not Default Profile. We'll give it a name. I'll use something inventive like Jets to Engine. Then once that's done, Click on Create. You can use the Select Profile slider. If not, load the new profile from the Profiles menu. We need to configure Axis 3 and 4. First of all, Axis 3. Highlight the axis and then click on Lever 3 Commercial Reverser. Then on the editor, under Press Event, hit the plus sign to add a variable. And in the search box, type in THR to bring up throttles. And we're searching for throttle 1 decrease. Click on it to select it. This needs a value. Put in minus 1 for max reverse. Then on the bottom right hand side, 
click Apply Changes. Now highlight Axis 4. In the Select button bar, click on 4 Lever Commercial Reverser, then to the Profile Editor and add a variable under Press Event. Select a variable as per last time and type in THR again to bring up throttles. And this time we're looking for Throttle 2 Decrease. And once selected, we'll also be putting in a value of minus 1 to indicate max reverse thrust. And once again, apply changes to save this to our profile. Once that's done, under the actions, click on activate current profile to load it into prepared. I'm sure you're getting the hang of it now. We're going to follow exactly the same process as we did for the four engine setup. Choose Bravo Throttle Quadrant from the controller box. And initially we're going to delete those axes that we don't require. Engines 3 and 4. We do that by highlighting the respective item and then clicking on the delete box at the bottom. For engine 1 we need to change the axis assignment, so hit on change. And on the quadrant, move throttle 1. Prepared sees it, click OK. We can ignore the warning and now set up axis for our second engine. Engine 2 throttle axis. Click new, then move the throttle on the Bravo throttle quadrant and then click OK. Because they're throttle axis, make sure that we tick the reverse boxes for both engines. Our flaps and spoiler axis are still set up on the right axis from our four engine setup so we can leave them as it is. Let's give it a test. We'll start off by checking both throttle axis, first throttle one and then throttle two. That all looks okay. Let's now check the flap and the spoilers. Make sure they're working. Quick check on the gear. That's all okay. Now let's check our individual reverses. Reverser engine one. Take it out of reverse, push the reverser handle forward and move it to idle. Now let's test reverser number 2. That's all working as expected, now let's test both reverses together. That's all working as expected, so let's hit the export button to save this profile. And we'll rename it so we can identify it as a two-engine jet profile. And whenever we're flying two-engine jets, this is probably the profile that will do you. We've renamed it, hit save, and we're done. So if you've been following along, we now have a number of different profiles created. We have the default profile. We have props with throttle and mixture, throttle prop and mixture, and throttle prop mixture with reverser, as well as a twin engine with separate reversers for the throttles. And we've also set up our twin and four engine jets. My configuration guide has only really covered the basic to get you up and running. If you're willing to invest a little bit of time, far more sophisticated configurations are possible. It does require reference to the event IDs for prepared, which are in effect commands. Here it's showing us the command for go around is auto throttle to GA. And for some, not all of the commands, there are variables or values. If we have a look at the variables table, for example, for the go around, we see there are no variables. It's either go around or not. Variables are often a zero or a one or something similar. So for example, let's go back to the two engine jet profile that we created earlier. From Profiles, I'm selecting Jets 2 Engine. And as we saw, this already has the individual reverses that we put in earlier. But we can enhance this configuration fairly easily. Back to Axis 3, and we'll select the 3 lever reverser button. And within the Profile Editor, under Variables, we can see the Throttle 1 Decrease function we put in. Let's click on Release Event, and click the plus button to add a variable, and once again, Type in THR for throttles. 
And this time we're searching for throttle one cut. And the reason we're adding this is we will not need to push the throttles forward to come out of reverse. All we'll need to do is flip the reverser lever forward. More realistic. And we can do the same for throttle two. The only difference here being under the release event, we'll be choosing throttle two cut. We'll add a variable as we did last time and type in THR and click on the item to select it. There's throttle to cut. Always remember on the bottom right hand side to apply changes to the profile for any changes made. Otherwise they won't be saved and they'll be lost. Well I hope the five profiles that we've built today is enough of a basic template to get you up in the air and get you started. Obviously, you can build on these and create more bespoke and complex configurations to suit your flying preferences. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Much appreciated. Stay well, stay safe. Don't forget you can find SimHanger on Discord as well. Link in the notes below. See you soon and bye for now.